please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. All right, uh, it's not been a particularly exciting day, uh, unlike I mean, what we basically saw yesterday, which was all over the place. Uh, we've got 16, 17 points on Nifty. The mid-cap index is uh, absolutely flat. Advanced decline is now uh, firmly uh, in favor of declines. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Mid-Cap Radar. I'm Prashant Nair. With me is my colleague Samira. Samira Afno. Hi, Prashant. Good afternoon to you as well. And quickly, let's take stock of the European markets as well and see what kind of an opening uh, we've seen uh, uh, coming in for Europe. Uh, the expectation was that it would be a bit of a mixed uh, opening over there. So, uh, opening over there. So, flat to, uh, you know, just slightly positive for some of the uh, markets and even for them, the key monitorable. Okay, so <clears throat> that is basically lots of earnings. But let's get a sense on markets. As always, on the top of the show, Ashwini is with us. Uh, Ashwini, afternoon. Uh, so, uh, just your reading at 1.30, as you see. See, the bears have tried several times, either on the back of results or in the morning. I, I would think it's fair to say that uh, they are losing the battle. And the bank nifty is still up 155, 157. Uh, you know, mid caps are also not falling beyond a point. So for the next you know, one and a half hours till 3.30, particularly on the bank nifty, uh, you should remain long. I would think maybe it'll get back to the high point of the day because uh, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, post numbers have uh, restarted uh, moves, particularly on HDFC Bank and Kotak. So that way, uh, I would think that this is a buying zone rather than a selling zone. And overall, we are still hanging fairly close to yesterday's highs. So at some point, uh, once the highs get taken out, you will see uh, you know, a resumption of the rally. So um, I would also think the mid-cap breadth and mid-cap indices overall should improve because uh, once the bears don't get traction, even on the mid-caps, I think recoveries can be uh, fairly sharp. Uh, having said that, uh, individual stocks, uh, Kotak is a buy with a stop of 1,040, target of 1,090. Biocon is a buy with a stop of 560, target of 595. And also Mindtree post the numbers is again making fresh highs. So even on text, there is buying. That's a buy with a stop of 680, target of 715. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Ashwini, uh, you know, so uh, the uh, something like a Tata Steel, where does it sit now? I mean, on charts? Because I think yesterday you had a sell on Tata Steel. Today, you uh, earlier on at 11, you had uh, said buy JSW Steel. So my question actually broadly is about metals. See, metals is in an uptrend mm. going through a correction. Now, if the market starts to make new highs, these stocks will turn equally sharply. So this is a time to get into Tata Steel or Vedanta or JSW. Why? Because the mid-cap correction is not picking up steam. So that way, these are good areas to get long on metals, particularly because they are off from their highs. So overall, uh, all of these high beta groups, particularly on financials, I think you know banks are probably pricing in crude prices coming off, hence yield coming off, etc. Because this sort of you know continuous buying is uh, you know very extraordinary in banks. But overall, I think the market is finding support, and sooner or later we will make fresh highs. Uh, DLF Ashwini, I mean on charts it's come off a little bit. It was 270 or so. It's now at about 245. See, real estate is in a very, very strong bull market, and uh, so is DLF. Again, strong sector going through a correction, 50 DMA is 240. So at some point, as the market turns around, so will DLF. So again, uh, it's in a buying zone here. Uh, keep a stop below 240, and we should see maybe even a 290, 295 at some point. All right, Ashwini, thanks very much for your afternoon trade. <coughs> Let's get the focus back on earnings then. We've seen a couple of the big ones already out, but uh, what's awaited now in the evening is Reliance and Vipro. So let's uh, get chatting on what we can expect from Vipro this quarter. Anisha is here with a quick preview. Anisha. 
Well, yes, Samara, the numbers are expected around 4 p.m., so not long before we know what happens. But in terms of the guidance for Q3, the company had guided for a growth of around 0 to 2 percent, which was as it is uh, said by the analysts that it is a bit of weak guidance, and we are expecting the numbers to come at the midpoint of that. So we're working with a dollar revenue growth of around 1 percent to come at 2,033 million dollars. In terms of the rupee revenue, however, we are expecting uh, it to grow close to 3 percent to come at 13,500 odd crores. The EBIT, however, is expected to remain steady at around that 17.1 percent mark. Now, the top line of the company, where we are seeing a growth of around 3 percent, is expected to be aided by the acquisitions that the company did in this year. The EBIT margin, as well as the dollar revenue, is expected to be a bit muted because they might be facing currency headwinds when it comes to the Australian dollar sector to the tune of around 100 basis point, and that is where the operational efficiencies will get offset by the currency headwinds that the company is seeing. Other than that, the profit figure also might be a bit tepid, given the other income is expected to come down after the buyback that company executed. As far as the other key things to watch out for, well, Q4 guidance is what the street is watching out for. Most of the analysts expect that the uh, guidance would be in the range of 1 to 3 percent constant currency growth in the March quarter. Let's see whether that happens or not. The management has been talking about converging when it comes to the industry growth uh, from quarter four onwards. Let's see whether we hear fresh commentary on that as well or not. Other than that, the commentary that we have been watching out for other IT companies as well in terms of digital, financial service, telecom, healthcare, etc., is what we need to watch out for Vipro as well. Back to you. All right. All right. Uh, go ahead, Prashant. All right. No, uh, thanks very much, Anisha, for that. Uh, so that's uh, uh, I on numbers. Lupin has just launched uh, a generic version of uh, what essentially is, uh, uh, you know, antibacterial uh, tablet used to treat acne, etc. So this, I mean, the uh, the, uh, the 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 flash uh, basically names uh, is named Vibra Tabs, which basically is, I think, doxycycline. Uh, we have the market size numbers at 144 million dollars as of November 200, uh, 2017. Uh, but remember, uh, you know, when you talk about generic launches. You know, price drops 90%, if not more. And we don't know if there are other players already in the market. But Lupin's up half a percent. It spiked as, as soon as that news actually came through. Another uh, important number to watch will be essentially jubilant uh, food. Uh, the numbers should be out soon in the next, uh, what, half an hour, one hour. Mangalam is here with the expectations. Mangalam. 30 minutes as the pizza delivers, uh, Prashant, as far as the numbers are, are concerned. Uh, in the next 30 minutes, we should get the numbers. Stock, just for perspective, is at a record high. The new CEO, new strategy, improved product offerings. Things have been going right for Jubilant Food. Along with that, we have the tailwinds for the quick service restaurants as well. So we're working with a revenue growth of 14%. EBITDA is likely to increase much more because of the improved offering, operating leverage, as well as the cost focus. EBITDA growth of 61%. And the net profit should double to about 124% uh, uh, around that 45 crore rupees mark. Remember, we have the favorable base too. The most important number to watch for Jubilant Foodworks, and that number comes 15 minutes after uh, the, the income statement is uh, reported to the exchanges. Uh, that's the same store sales growth number. We're working with a number of 10 to 11 percent. And if the company does go ahead and post a double digit sale, store sales growth number, this will be the first time since uh, uh, third quarter FI 13 that the company would essentially be posting a double digit same store sales growth number. Uh, customer feedback on their everyday value, new pizzas, has been fairly good. Brokerages are increase, increasingly bullish on Jubilant Food. So it's a very important number for the, for the street to track and uh, for the company to go ahead and deliver more than just pizzas. News break has been confirmed. HDFC Bank has upgraded one account of 1,700 crore rupees. Ritu Singh had reported earlier that uh, it could possibly be the JSPL account. Ritu, you're at the HDFC uh, Bank's press meet. Uh, anything more that has come through from the management? Well, yes, lots of comments from the management. They just stopped short of naming the account that was responsible for that divergence. But that said, this is what the management had to say, that as of FI17, their stated NPAs were 5,885 crores, but RBI thereafter noted a, a divergence of 2,052 crore rupees, which comprised of three accounts. The largest one of that was about 1,707 crore rupees, for which the management clarified it was a consortium loan uh, for an account uh, for which loans were restructured under the 
525 scheme. And in a joint lender forum meeting held on the 30th of December, uh, they, uh, the joint lender forum decided to upgrade that account because of the fact for th uh, that uh, because of the fact that the last 12 months uh, the account had been standard. That means repayments had been coming in uh, within the 90-day timeline, and there had been no default. And therefore, it met the IRAC norms and was reversed thereby to a standard account again. And uh, all provisions uh, made on account of this were again uh, will be written off. But you know, as we had reported earlier, uh, this is the JSPL account. We understand it's fairly uh, common knowledge now, uh, and and that is the account that HDFC Bank has, uh, you know, uh, uh, upgraded back to standard. Uh, this is uh, what the bank clarified that uh, you know there was no default in payments, but it was uh, you know a problem with the 525 implementation, which they did not really clarify what the problem was. But we understand from sources that uh, you know uh, when the project was Im uh, uh, the refinancing was implemented for the 525 scheme for the Angul plant, it hadn't been commissioned at the time, which violated the criteria laid down by RBI, because of which RBI had to force the banks to identify it as a non-performing asset. All right, Rizu, thanks very much uh, for that. Let's also actually listen in uh, to what the management had to say at that press conference about the matter. This was an account which was subject to the flexible structuring uh, under the 525 uh, framework. And in respect of that, the regulation, the supervisory uh, uh, communication was that they felt that was not uh, sort of meeting all the regulatory guidelines, and therefore that flexible structuring amounted to restructuring, and which therefore declared an NP. From a servicing perspective, the account had not been uh, past 90 days, uh, which was the, you know, which was the accounting reality. IIT Technologies numbers uh, for the third quarter looking better than expected. Uh, 10 crores, uh, roughly, uh, you know, beat on the. Uh, net profit front, uh, so which is what about a 15 odd percent beat on profits and revenues are also better, 756 odd crores compared to about 741 odd crores or so. That's, a, that's about uh, five percent, around about five percent beat on the uh, top line. We've got the EBITDA. I mean that's roughly in line with <coughs> expectations, 125 crores compared to around that number which was expected, and margins are also. I mean actually margins at 16.6 percent, a bang in line uh, with what the poll actually threw up. Uh, so that's the NIT tech numbers, but basically on the profit, uh, it's a big uh, beat uh, which has actually come through. The stock is spiking. Uh, you know, the growth was there, there wasn't any growth which was expected on the net profit number, 66 and a half crores compared to 67 crores same quarter last year. Uh, but this, uh, the actual number is uh, looking very, very Some good. Some more details they've added. So there's five. jubilant food which has come through. Oh, okay. uh, so 66 crores in terms of net profits compared to a poll of 45 crores. Now that is. Uh, a substantial beat, uh, which is actually coming through, a 20% beat on profits. Revenues of, uh, are coming in at 795 crores compared to seven, uh, 750 odd crores, uh, which uh, is uh, coming through uh, for uh, jubilant food uh, at this point. So that's again, I mean, a 6-7% kind of a beat on uh, the top line. Uh, but the bottom line is looking a lot better than what was expected. Mangalam is going to be joining us in just a bit. Uh, but I think we can look at some other numbers as well. If it does uh, on screen. Uh, yeah, so it's looking good. I think it was expected to be a good quarter anyways because in terms of uh, their <coughs> same store sales growth as well, which we'll get to the lag of about 10 odd minutes, it was expected uh, to see a growth of about 10 to 11 odd percent, which compares with the 5, 6 percent that they've been uh, doing in the previous two quarters of FY18 and of course last year we saw a lot of those uh, negative numbers as well. Tax expense uh, is higher. Uh, I missed that number. I think 45 watt cross is uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, what the tax expense has come in. But I think overall uh, it's looking good and the stock surging as we speak. Mangalam, uh, any more details? Um, no, no more details, but the numbers that we have, it uh, they're there for us on the screen. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're much above what uh, the street was expecting. Trying to get a handle of what their rent expense was, so this could perhaps give us a bit of uh, indication on the kind of store closures and store opening is. But revenue looks like a top-down beat. You know, a revenue uh, beat of close to 45 crores implies a higher <coughs> beat on the EBITDA and the net profit primarily because of the operating leverage uh, that the company enjoys or the business model itself enjoys. In a few minutes from now, we'll probably get the same store sales growth as well. We were working with a number of anywhere between 10 to 11 percent. Let's see whether the company goes ahead and, uh, and uh, gives a beat on that because that's what it appears as far as just the frontline numbers are concerned. So trying to get a handle on uh, I think rent the press is at release. 78 yep. 
crores and that compares which with which compares with about uh, 72 crores in the september ending quarter and the december ending is about 73 crores all right so uh, they haven't really uh, opened too many stores in this quarter and mm. that was something that the company uh, had guided for earlier as well all through this year the first half they've opened just eight stores this year this quarter don't doesn't look like they, they've opened any more than 10 stores and they may have shut a few Dunkin' Donuts stores as well. But looks like it is a good set of numbers above what the street was ex expecting. And the stock has uh, hit a record high. And I think a it's bitter a bitter margin of 17.2%. Did I read that right, Mangala? 17.2% is correct, uh, Sumera. You know, and that compares with our poll of 13.7%. <coughs> so, of course, the operating leverage really mm. playing out. It, it's a top-down beat, to be very honest. Uh, there's no two ways about it. 795 crores on the top line, where majority of the street was wo was working with 750 crores is, is something that uh, explains uh, the beat that we're seeing on the EBITDA as well as the net profit. Uh, I will just watch out for the same store sales growth. Yeah, when did you last see margins this good? <coughs> I do not really have the trend, but definitely not in the last three, three and a half, four years at least because the last time they did uh, double digit same store sales growth was in the third quarter of FY13 and whenever they've done double digit same store sales growth is when the margins have outperformed. So 17% margins, I don't remember the last time they had I done think, that. I uh, think about right. a year and a half, even just a year and a half back, uh, EBITDA margins were around the 10% mark. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, last so quarter was the best that they had done in a very long time and that time it was 14.8%. So this yeah. time it's 17.2%. It's a beat. I mean, it's, but, it's a I mean that's the beat. power of uh, operating leverage. That's the power yeah. of operating leverage. Also, it, it works against you if oh, yeah. the, the revenues don't come in mm -hmm. uh, Line with expectations, but this time it's beaten, uh, beat, beat all the street expectations top down. Okay, so that's looking good uh, <coughs> for Jubilant Foods. I think we're out of time uh, now on mid cap radar, but we'll leave it to your stocks to take the earnings action forward and also that promised story on Manapuram Finance. Take